I'd like you to share with us, please, first of all, make some opening remarks on your observations and uh, your experience and what it's told you about um, the civil service and also the need to have an inclusive approach to um, employing people, not just based on gender, but right across the board. So give us your reflections. Well, let me say good afternoon to everyone and um, to thank God that we're having this kind of forum to look at issues relating to gender and what I refer to as equal opportunities. Let me also thank JW for taking the bold step to bring the issues in a cohesive manner because there are a lot of people that have talked about gender issues, women issues, uh, but you know where you are coming from, it's clear to you where you are, it's clear to you where you want to go to, and that makes the difference. I congratulate you and your team. Now back to the topic I was giving, which I have a clearer perspective of coming to this audience. Uh, was civil service, equal opportunities, access and progress. The civil service, I use the Nigeria civil service as a structure, and I'm also happy that I've worked across Africa and also globally during my uh, stint with the National Program on Immunization. Immunization is a global strategy for reduction of disease, and I was the pioneer chief executive of the organization, and we had to go to many countries across Africa. So I have colleagues all over, and in, um, all over in the UK, in Geneva, and everywhere. So. And the WHO that anchors that is a civil service organization. Civil service, as it were, is the engine room of governance. It's responsible for what government is and can be. And the civil service structure in Nigeria, as it were, with other civil service structure, because it was borrowed from the UK, has equal opportunities. And I tell you this story. I graduated in 1976, and as I was in the final year, the civil service recruitment team, which in Nigeria is the Federal Civil Service Commission, as opposed to the office of the head of service, recruits people. It was then under the Federal Ministry of Establishment. Things have evolved. They go to the universities and they recruit the best for the civil service. The best because civil service needs to be active, needs to be performance oriented to get a nation moving. We had interviews then in 1976. And then the result is pasted on the wall if you have passed or if you have not. Don't forget that Nigeria, like many African countries, had a long stint with the military. And this is a history a lot of us forget and want things to just change. But human beings are always a product of their environment, as it were, you evolve with your environment. So we started well. Taking on the British system is the same system in the World Health Organization, is the same system at the United States, is the same system everywhere. You want the best to come into the service. It's not about salary, even though the salaries are not too bad. It's about you working patriotically to get your nation somewhere. So the story continues. I came in had one year internship because that was compulsory to be registered and then served the nation in the nationwide NYSC and moved on. And you had to take step by step examinations from one level to the other. Until the struggle that came to Nigeria about the military era where somebody can sign in, somebody can say, employ this, the directive, and that is done. 
civil service was well structured. During the first, the first republic came in, they practiced the same thing. The second republic came in and because there was a bit of Um, the, the, the civil service is now skewed towards a certain part of the country, particularly the southern part of the country. There was then need to create what we call the Federal Character Commission. The Federal Character Commission, very good law for development. It allows for every representation across board in any particular office. And that helps to build equity. And that was, is still being practiced to date. Then also comes the quota system. The quota system is not just, it's what you can call something that the gender issues can plug into. But it didn't happen that way simply because good laws are good as it were. But if you have a bad implementer of the good law, the law becomes bad. So when you have people who follow the rules operating the quota system, you get a good representation of the weak in quotes. So the quota system is expected to bring all different groups that are um, that are disadvantaged. So it takes care of the disadvantage. And of course, from the statistics we got this morning, mm -hmm. women are disadvantaged. So but can I ask you, is there yeah. a quota system for women specifically to be no. recruited into the civil service? There's no quota system for women. But the quota system can help the women. And in practice, does it? I mean, I understand, we understand what you say about it. It helps bring about a a good ethnic and regional representation insofar as you can in, mm -hmm. in terms of recruits to the civil mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. But how, how can it help to actually ensure that there is better female representation? Because when you said, you know, you try to choose the best, the it's not a level playing field, is it? It is a level, in my view, in the civil service structure, yes, okay. it is a level playing field. But because of the infraction of the, the military rule, because of nepotism, tribalism, and mm. things like that, it got, it's now skewed. You get what I mean? In a regional but ethnic sense, but not necessarily in terms of gender balance. Mm. How would you, what's It your affects assessment? the women simply because there are few positions, few vacancies for quite a lot of people now. This is where the abuse of the women come in. Instead of the equity structure to help the women who have capacity, who are capable, who can do the work to come in, I'm, I'm afraid the men now try to use other means on the ladies. The gentlemen also have their parts. They maybe to the corrupt officers pay for it. But the point I want to make clearly is this, that the equal opportunity is probably one of the things that we should be looking at. And then like what my president said, the support for women should be driven clearly because it is the support, I was telling my story, that keeps a woman in service. So now I could stay 35 years in service because I had the support. Mm. But what was it like in 76 when you first joined? Did you find yourself as the only woman or one of the few handful of women? And, and has the picture got better? You retired this year from the uh, civil service in Nigeria. And you left it in, in better shape in terms of representation for women, do you think? Uh, when I started in 76, in my profession, there are fewer women. That's, again, I don't know, the reason must be that, you know, maybe because you have to work very late, 
That's where I was coming with the support. There has to be support for women because you work very late. If you have to show capability, you have to show capacity to be able to stay in the work. What kind of support are you referring to? Yes. I said I got married at 25, finished at 23, and children started coming. I work in the hospital, so I have a support. There's a crutch. Now, we keep saying these things. Good. You keep saying these things that you want women to get somewhere, but you need to do practical things that can make the women stay. Mm. Quite a lot of offices still don't have crutch. And when you come to the UK, as we are here now, mm. a lot of offices have crutch because they want to keep their women in the job. So the women now, their heart is where their children are. So they keep the children in the crutch, and they can go during coffee break, they can go during lunch, and they are sure that their children are doing well. So they stay in the job. Mm -hmm. So a question of equity, no. In civil service, there's equity, but staying in the job and rising up to the top, you don't find the women there because they've left. Sure, and that's something that you see. Well, that's very, very interesting. Yes, because yep. coming to such a forum, you need to bring the issues out. I don't sure. want to play sentiments. Mm -hmm. I want to say it as it is, that mm -hmm. women don't rise up to the top. We, yeah, we because need family, they have family distraction, yeah. children distraction, okay. and they are not able to keep the norms of the service, sure. and they are not able to withstand the strain because they are distressed in many fronts. How do we tackle this? That will be Support, one of yeah. crash, and so on. When you when you have Family a breakout, when you have a breakout practice. session, mm -hmm. you probably will have more suggestion from sure. everyone. Sure. But I want to be very practical. That sure. that's what it is. Sure. And um, in Nigeria, in the civil service, uh, I don't know of other places, I, and I don't think there is. Uh, until you get to the many, you get to the top, even for the post of the permanent secretary. Yeah. You mm -hmm. sit examination for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I happen to have also been permanent secretary, public service office. There's nothing in the file that stops a woman from not mm -hmm. rising to the top unless you fail the exam. Now, you can fail the exam if you have not been thorough in service. You have been going in and out, leave of absence for two, three years, four years because your child has to go to this and all that. Those are things that we should look at and... Uh, but within the service structure, yeah. Now, appointments as a permanent secretary, then you get a bit skilled. Mm. If, for example, you want to appoint somebody to permanent secretary defense, permanent secretary power, I was asked to go to power by my president, who believed that, look, the woman can do the job. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to the ordinary appointments, they will say, okay, let the woman, I mean, we were six when we became permanent secretary out of 42. So they can ask you to go to, you know, some of okay. those ministries that is assumed are not busy enough and you can make your way there. But the contrary is the truth. All the women are doing very well. Thank you. Thank Dr. Daria Washika, th thank you very much indeed you. for your, just stay, stay sitting, for your opening remarks. Yeah. We'll be able to um, have a bit of a discussion with you.